Well, hello, and welcome to Baseball and Graveyards. As you can see from the writing on the gates, today we're at Crestlawn Cemetery in Vero Beach, Florida. Hey, follow me and let's go visit a former major leaguer. Now as you follow the road to the right, as it curves left just under this large tree, you'll find Carl Spooner. Now Carl broke into the big leagues as a hard-throwing lefty late in the 1954 season with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Now arm problems plagued the lefty at the beginning of the 55 season, and that was considered to be the greatest season really in Dodgers history. Carl started game six of the 55 series against the Yankees, and that would actually be the last time he ever played in a major league game. His sore arm just never fully recovered. And Carl died in 1984 in Vero Beach, Florida. Well, let's continue south on US-1 here in Fort Pierce, Florida, and we'll come to Hillcrest Memorial Gardens. Now, this is a beautiful cemetery here in St. Lucie County, Florida. So let's take a look around. Now, we're visiting here to honor a true American hero. Now, not a hero due to his baseball exploits, but because of his service to our country. Now, Danny Ozark was active in the Battle of the Bulge in World War II. He also received a Purple Heart for his service to our country. Now sandwiching his service to America, Mr. Ozark played 18 seasons, hitting over 200 home runs, but all of that was in the minor leagues. In 1965, Danny Ozark was hired as a coach under Walter Alston's Los Angeles Dodgers. Now he remained with them for eight seasons before he was hired as manager of the struggling Philadelphia Phillies in 1972. He led the Phillies to three consecutive division titles in 1976, 77, and 78. And he was also a coach on two World Series championship teams, both of those with the Dodgers in 1965 and 1981. Now I'm sure you noticed as well as I that there is a shadow overlooking his grave here that I guess it was just bad timing. However, when I look closer and you see that it's American flag casting most of that shadow, I find it kind of fitting. Danny Ozark passed away in 2009 in Vera Beach, Florida at the age of 85. Now heading back north into Cocoa, Florida in Brevard County, we come to the corner of Jackson and Var. This was once the site of Provost Field. Now you see from the above picture two fields. The one with the grandstand, now that's the one that hosted the minor league teams. Provost Field on the right in the picture is actually still in existence. It's now just a softball field. But all the ball games for the minor league players at the professional level was played at the Provost Field with the grandstand. And the first photo I took was from looking at the grandstand, if it were still there. And I also took a photo and a little bit of video from the right field corner. Provost Field was home to the minor league Coco Flyers of the Florida East Coast League from 1941 to 1942 when they disbanded. It was also home to the minor league Coco Indians of the Florida State League from 1951 to 1958. And also a Negro League Coco Black Indians, they also played there. The most famous person to play there was 21-year-old Felipe Elu in 1956 after he signed with the Giants. And this was the first field he played on as a professional baseball player. Still in the city of Coco, we come to Brevard Memorial Park. Now as we stroll around the park, we come to the rear, which would be considered the warning track of the cemetery. Now nestled inside the Catholic Garden West, we come to Jake Early. Now Jake was known as a very good defensive catcher, and he was an all-star in 1943 with the Washington Senators. He went on to serve in the military in 44 and 45, and when he came back to baseball, he just never could quite return to form. Now Jake was known as uh, being very distracted to the hitters. He would sometimes imitate a play-by-play -play commentary, he sometimes would talk as if he were an auctioneer at an auction. 
And sometimes he didn't even sing. Jake passed away in 1985. Our last stop today will not be extra innings, but certainly extra miles, straight north. 1150 to be exact. We come to St. Michael's Cemetery in Stratford, Connecticut, and we are visiting an early Hall of Famer, Jim O'Rourke. Now, Jim was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1945 after compiling a lifetime 310 average. Order Jim, as he was called, made his debut with the Middletown Mansfields in 1872. As a Yale graduate, he obtained the nickname Orator due to his intellect. He was known to use his verbal skills to often get under the skin of his opponents because they couldn't comprehend the words that he was using. Now some of Jim O'Rourke's accomplishments? In 1895, he hired the first African American to a minor league contract. In 1876, he had the first base hit in National League history. In 1904, at age 54, he became the oldest player to appear in a National League game and the oldest to hit safely in a Major League game. And in 1912, he caught a complete minor league game at the age of 60. Jim O'Rourke died of pneumonia at the age of 68. Well, thanks for going along with this journey with me today. And please subscribe to my channel. There's lots of places to visit, lots of ball players to visit, and I really need the company. So, until next time.